Welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, that was the sound of Subtractor, the synth that launched with Propellerhead's Reason 20 years ago. Yes, can you believe it? Subtractor and Reason are now celebrating their 20th birthday to this very month. So today I thought we'd pay tribute to this wonderful little synthesizer by giving, a, giving you a quick guided tour of its features. I'll play you some of the sounds, of course, and perhaps we'll throw in some effects and some loops and just have a quick jam. So I hope that sounds like fun. Make yourself comfortable. Let's get started. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Reason, this is how it looks when you start it up. I am going to drag in an instance of Subtractor. This is one of the many synthesizer devices into this virtual rack. This has been a Reason thing ever since the day it was released in year 2000. Can you believe it? This is pretty much the same age as the Korg Triton that we've been featuring on the channel recently. So let's pull over Triton into the rack. There you go. Now we can navigate around. We not only have an instance of Subtractor that I can play here on my MIDI keyboard. Nice bass sound there. And I'll map up the controls here on my NIA49 pretty soon. <laughs> okay. Um, but what we can do is switch to the mixer over there or we can switch to the sequencer, but today we'll just mainly have it on the rack view here. Let me zoom in and we'll take a closer look. So we are in the bass category here. Let's give you an idea what some of these bass sounds do sound like. Almost Top Gun. Maybe later in the video we'll have a bit of fun by dropping in some of the player devices so we can get a arpeggio going or a nice bass line or something. That's a cool sound, but let's take a quick look at the controls here, what this synthesizer has to offer. It's a basic virtual analog thing, inspired perhaps by synthesizers like the Nord Lead hardware synthesizers that were around at the time. And I remember having a Nord Lead back in 2001 or something when I was trying out Reason and I realized that the subtractor here, this virtual analog software synthesizer actually sounded better, I think, than my Nord lead. So I was a bit disappointed by the Nord, but also super impressed by the software synthesizer here. So we have two oscillators. If I adjust the mix, so we just hear oscillator one and then we can Switch through the waveforms. There are your traditional, okay, so this is down, traditional, square, triangle, and so on, but also some funky, <laughs> interesting harmonic waveforms that just have a number. It's pretty nice. Two oscillators, so I have another one down here. We have a square wave, we can mix it in. We can, for example, have a fifth, detune it. Okay, we have a couple of filters, two filters available to us that we can uh, have different various filter types. Low pass at the moment. I'm just gonna map this up so I can do it on the keyboard here, just like so, okay. Now I can sweep, so you can hear what the filter sounds like. Band pass, high pass, low pass 24, low pass 12. And we can run it through a second filter here as well. If we wanted to, Let's activate that one, unlink them. Okay, filter envelopes, amp envelopes, we have your pretty standard stuff. We also have a modulation envelope that you can assign to various things. And we have LFOs, noise generator, another LFO down here. There's no unison mode, which I was actually looking out for here, but that can be achieved by using uh, many of the other reason effects. So there's a few more bases we can have a listen. 
So although a pretty basic architecture and a very simple synth, it does everything that I could possibly need and is actually pretty flexible. It gives you uh, a lot of versatility and you can create a wide variety of sounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Why don't we slap some reverb onto this and I'll play you some of the pad sounds so you can see what I mean. Okay, so we actually have three different reverbs here already on the send channels and a echo effect. So I am going to switch over to the mixer. We have this uh, rather nice uh, SSL style mixer here, but I'm just going to enable the send for the first four channels here. Let's take another listen. Okay, jump back to the rack. That one there. Let's take a listen to some of the pads. Bachelor, bachelor Pad, oh, that's a great name. Some pretty nice reverbs in uh, Reason, I have to say. Ball and Chain. <laughs> yeah. So you can get some quite interesting and more complex sounds than you might think. Yeah, it's pretty incredible to me that this is 20 years old. And uh, I'm not sure of the exact version history, but it seems pretty much unchanged from when I was using it uh, back in the day, 20 years ago. Interface certainly looks very similar. Let's carry on, play a few more. That's great. This one all, almost has an FM kind of quality to it. So I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty impressive for a subtractive virtual analog synth. Carry on. Okay, so I have a very nice Oberheimy brassy sound. going to map my resonance control to my keyboard controller here. Let's do that down here. Like so. We're done. Now I have... Sorry about that if you're wearing headphones. Yeah, a very tasty filter. Let's throw some effects on. Why don't we take, for example, we already have plenty of reverb. Um, we could take... 
for example, some distortion, perhaps? Let's take the pulverizer to begin with, see what this does. Okay, a lot of compression. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> okay, an insane amount of distortion. Sorry if I'm jumping around on the screen. I'm having to use the Windows Zoom here because some of these devices are a little bit sl uh, small for me. Just the balance, dry, you can add a little bit of effects. So you can also have a filter. Interesting. We could also throw in a chorus and see how it sounds. So let's pull this one in. I haven't tried this out myself. Let's see how it sounds. Oh, one thing I need to show you. This is pretty cool. The iconic uh, flipping the rack over to look at the routings and check out these jiggly cables. This is a bit of a classic design by the Propellerheads team. Take a look at this. <laughs> yes, those jiggly cables. Can't get enough of those. Let's uh, take a look and see what this uh, this chorus effect is doing for us. Sounds really nice. Without the chorus then, bypass this one. Switch it on. Yeah, I gotta say, really enjoying the sound of the instruments here and the effects as well. Let's put a player effect in front of Subtractor that will manipulate the MIDI that I'm playing from the keyboard here, see if we can get some interesting effects. Okay, that's cool. Let's throw a player effect in front of it. We can take this arpeggio, for example, drop that in there. Let's see what we've got now. Yeah, very pretty. And this is just one instance of Subtractor. You can also start layering them together if that's something that you want to do. But this sounds pretty epic to me as it is. Let me show you what we can do if we throw in a couple of loops into the mix using the Dr. Octorex. Let me show you that quickly. We won't, we won't go into uh, depth here. That's probably a subject for another video, but I'll just get a little groove going here. All right, so I just played around for a little bit and dropped in two Dr. Octo Rex. These are loop players, the uh, Rex recycle format, and we have a nice kind of LFO pad. So let's start it up. Change around between the loops, like so. Let's take a different drum loop.
Yeah, you can have a lot of fun just throwing in loops. There is some really inspiring content here to get you going. So there you go, happy birthday Subtractor and Reason. Congratulations on your 20th. And I'm really happy to see you're still going strong and still sounding great. I'll see you again next time. Cheerio.